Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how I manually track ETI data. Yesterday, I received an email from this Studio user. He mentioned there's a problem processing data, could be due to registration problem. Um, I, and I thought that this could be a good trend to show how I check data quality. Because a lot of time, the issue could be due to the signal issue, a consistent problem. Um, it would be good to check data quality before processing it. Um, it could be that there is some problem that we could fix before processing and get the fiber tracks. And thanks to a user and his advisor allowing me to use their data to showcase here. I uh, really appreciate their help. Um, the data I received include two data. It's a longitudinal data scan including two scans, one in 2017 and another 2019. So I will check the data quality and see how it looks like. I will start from step T2. Just that you know, those files could be created from DICOM and NIFTY file using step T1. So now we open the data, here we see the mask. The first I will check is image orientation. I will slide this bar to the right. You go to the top of the brand. And yes, this looks okay, good. So if there is a slice flip, sometimes if the slice goes upside down, then we could correct it using edit and image flip D or correct other kind of flipping condition. So image orientation is good. This is your good as your slice. Anterior on the top, posterior on the bottom. Slider to the right goes to the top of brand. Left to the bottom of the brand. Then I will check the raw data. Click here. Left hand side shows different BWI, the B value and the table. And on the right is the corresponding raw signal. So I will click, click going through to use arrow button to go upside down or like button top. So you, this give us a quick view of how the brand's position looks like. So it seems to me that there's some such a movement. You see here like the brand will rotate it a little bit. So it will cause like a one or two box so shift. So if we are not correcting this, then there will be artificial tracks appearing at the outside surface near the gray matter because those are the region that being affected the most. To correct for that, I would recommend FSL's AD. Um, if you want to get a quick correction, DSS Studio also provide correction and motion correction. And DSS Studio use the B0 and other image to do the core situation and fix the rotation problem. So I will copy a file here that I have done the correction and let's see how things look like after this kind of correction. So also look at the raw data. So on corrected data set on the right, you see that brain rotated a little bit during the scan. On the left, It corrected that kind of rotation, but you could still see that it's not very 100% perfect. There's still like, I would say that has a also shift here. So if you pointed that this fossil here, so it's not perfect, but this correction is usable to handle most of the rotation. Ideally, I would still use FSL's Eddy if I want to get very good results. So you may wonder, okay, what's the difference between this kind of correction and not corrected data set? A quick way to show is that's wrong reconstruction and see how the results look like. Let's suppose you use GQI or either you can use DTI, it doesn't uh, differ that much. So we don't reconstruction. This one is uncorrected data set. This one is the corrected data set. DSS Studio will generate two FIT file, 
The corrective one is here. This one is not uncorrective one. So let's look at the uncorrective one. So if the motion curve is not corrected, this one, the Hoban tracking, just quickly get a Hoban track, click here, the fiber tracking button. You will see here, there's a lot of hairy, yellowish green fibers here on the surface. That's due to the, this kind of a minor head rotation. And we can compare it with the corrective one. So you see that it's very different on the surface. We don't have this kind of the artificial hairy fiber, even though here, I would say this may not be real fiber. You see here in the middle, maybe due to the remaining eddy current distortion. Most of the surface fibers do exclude you because you even see gyro foldings are period up. But here you will see all the fiber going in one direction and hairy. So that's a difference when you have motion correction and non motion correction. It affects most on the surface, but in the middle, the deep white matter, it won't matter that much. So let's, let's check another artifact here. So in addition to eddy current or motion um, distortion, then we would, I will also look at another distortion called phase distortion. So you see here is due to the susceptibility difference of the tissue. This happens at the tissue air interface, like here in the frontal sinus, there is a different susceptibility. So, uh, a step of this distortion, it, it comes with like a high intensity voxel. It's like the voxel being aggregated, uh, squeezed together. And then they will come with like a signal void. Usually happen in the frontal and also in the temporal base. So we go down here. In the temporal base here, you will see there's a signal void come with a squeeze of high intens intensity voxel. This is a typical phase distortion. To correct for this, um, we will need to collect additional B0 at the reverse phase direction. So this one should be using um, P2A and we will need an A2P B0, additional B0 and use FSL's top up to correct for it. And DSS Studio also offer a correction, uh, but I won't, I would still recommend FSL's top up as most people are using. But here, since we don't have this, we would just leave those distortion here, but we would keep in mind, if there's any finding around those region, we would need to exclude it um, in the frontal tip and also at the temple base. So this one is a phase distortion artifact. And the next one I'm going to check is whether there's a slice dropout. So slice dropout is some, it can be see when you look at the sagittal view. So what I use it is click here to look at the sagittal view. And then we check each of them quickly. So here you see here, there's a slice zigzag here. This could be due to such a movement, like the mouth, they, they speak, or like they chew their, their mouth and they move their tongue. Then this due to this. We don't have this here, but you see it may be due to such a movement. Now we could check other slides. Also brain scans are okay. So here's like a little bit. It's not that, no, a lot of dropout, but a little bit dropout. This should be okay. Uh, most of the um, modeling methods, reconstruction methods should take this kind of dropout. So most serious dropout will be entirely black slice signal at void. But here, the last one, this one is more serious, but still okay. 
So overall quality, I think it's okay. We could still use this data, but some of them may have slight signal dropout is it due to such a movement. Sometimes it's head call your problem and also have this kind of presentation, but most of the time it's due to such a movement. So I think like in this case, if that, that's just like say, okay, two or three DWI with few size dropout, most of the methods, either DTI, GQI, whatever methods, they, they pretty much would handle it, won't make much of a difference. But if you have more than half of the data were having this problem, such as it moved a lot, then probably the data is not good. Okay, so the last one I, I will check is fiber orientation. This one is the check whether the B table orientation is okay. So in some cases, like the B table direction may be flipped in one direction. Say for example, the B table, we could manually flip Y. This one is not flipping the image orientation, but flipping the B table, BX or BY or BZ. In some different tool may have different B table convention. For example, FSL's B table and DSI Studio's B table is different in wide direction. So whatever table from FSL need to flip in Y. If we don't flip it, then the fiber orientation will be will not be correct. So say for example, if I flip in the B Y, let's start it over. Um, let's open the motion corrective one. If we manually induce introduce this kind of flipping and we did not, we didn't notice and go fiber track uh, reconstruction. Then the fiber track will look incorrect. So here you will see that the fiber have some funny presentation. So here is like the orientation is not looking right. So compare with the one, so if the one we do, do not have this kind of flipping. You can see that, well, the difference may not be that obvious, but you can see the difference here. Sometimes it's hard to tell. But the best way to check is look at the center of the deep white matter. They say the Cobb's callosan. If you look at it left hand side, the ROI view here, let's remove the fiber tracking results and zoom in into each voxel what the fiber orientation looks like. You see here the Cobb's callosan should go this way, but the fibers go in flip in the Y orientation. Compare with the one that's, it, that's the correct orientation. You see that the fiber should go this way. So this is the only way we could check whether the B table is flipped or not, uh, is when you reconstruct the, the fifth file, look at each voxel, maybe check the Cobb's callosan or any location you know where the fiber should orient it. Then the correct one should nicely follow the track uh, trajectory, whereas the wrong one may be appear flipped. Sometimes it's tricky, but once you look at a few cases, you quickly figure it out. Or either you just click out the whole bunch of tracking. Um, the good one, once you know how the good one looks like, then you figure out, well, this one doesn't, this one looks funny uh, in this location and that location, the fiber being flipped. It. So that's the list um, I would check for each, um, for the data set, maybe the preliminary data, if you have built a new protocol, I want to make sure that everything is okay before you formally start a new study, then that should be the list you should check before you acquire scan for all your subjects.
Thank you very much and hope you enjoyed this video.